キャンディーなんて人気ばっかりで実力なんかないんだな。Well, of course, the smarks have to start young these days. Yeah, I'm sorry you're not going to be able to get some of these terms, but they're pretty much required for an episode like this. Cold opener featured, I think, an intergender slash age match between three female wrestlers and a young Minoru Suzuki. Well, hopefully, he gets a little more screen time than he did in Revise. Now, of course, this was just a fantasy for our spotlight classmate this week, Butsumi, who was having a match with Kotake commentated by Oh No. Wow, I can't believe I would ever say this, but can we get Michael Cole instead? Anyway, a typical squash match after one test of strength and a standing armbar giving Butsumi her 15th straight win over her classmates and making her a regular John Cena. Needless to say, she was a fan of Joshi Pro Wrestling, in particular a lady named Candy Ito, your standard babyface of the company who pushed all the merch. <laughs> Well, we know CM Punk would be able to get one of those, no problem. However, her brother was a mark for the bigger competitors who didn't see any value in the smaller ones. I mean, to be fair, she does look stronger than that twig they put the AEW Women's Championship on. FYI, I actually do like Joshi Pro Wrestlers, I just thought Riho was not at all convincing champion. And while I don't agree with his taste, and definitely not with him torturing his little sister, I will give him credit for pulling off a decent finger for a leg lock, even if he did forget to do the requisite <laughs> Fortunately, things were broken up by the ref, I mean their mom, who gave Mutsumi the candy figure she had sent away for. With her idol in hand, she dreamed of the day when she could tag with candy, which would probably require a lot of hot shine to get to such a position with a top baby face, but don't tell her that. I mean, granted, I would push anyone who was willing to have a handicap match with the Stooges. In the process, she did end up finding a compatible practice partner in Aiko, and thus invited all the Ojamajo to her house. Though, surprisingly, Hazuki turned out to be the casual wrestling fan amongst them. A bit of a nice subtle character moment for the two Ojamajo, showing how a you can't judge a book by its cover and b how people can come together with even some of the most tangential of ties to a hobby and as new friends she had them help her gorge on some more popsicles this time to win a tote bag yep fandoms in a nutshell also i know that aiko's just holding a stick here but am i the only one who sees something else who knows, maybe Aiko's secretly a big fan of the Attitude Era. The scene, unfortunately, did kind of end sloppily with them just kind of repeating stuff that we already know regarding the relationship between Mutsumi and her brother. Hell, we didn't even get to see her and Aiko practice like they said they would, instead they just kind of awkwardly cut to black. Though, considering who animated this episode, maybe that just wasn't in the cards. Later, they were invited to check out an actual wrestling show, which also caught the attention of this little putz. He, of course, tried to make it sound like he wanted to do a good thing by looking for a bad item, but of course he only wanted to ogle at the ladies in tight revealing gear. To be fair, this probably is one of the most accurate depictions of the IWC. At the event, Candy was fighting guy, I think, Aja Kong? Wait, she's actually still competing to this day? Okay, maybe Mutsubi's tag team dreams aren't that impossible. However, during the match, one of Candy's laces broke, and somehow the commentator noticed this and pointed it out? Wait, I get it, they're setting up a spot where Kong is gonna put her in an ankle lock, but at the very last minute, she's gonna slip out of her shoe and, uh, Oh, no wait, never mind. It was just leading to a really nasty looking botch rather than one of the best WrestleMania moments of all time. Rest in peace, Eddie. But yeah, after such a gnarly botch, I guess they decided to call an audible and quickly end the match so that Candy could go to the back and get some medical attention, which kudos to Kong for prioritizing the well-being of her opponent. Right, Charlotte? <laughs> Well, it can't really be helped considering everyone around you is clearly not being animated at all. Still, yeah, I guess these girls weren't aware of the concept of kayfabe just yet, which good for them, at least it makes them a lot less cynical than some idiots on YouTube or the like. I know what I said. However, there are such things as work shoot promos where the wrestler works in some real life stuff, and in Candy's case, after a botch like that, it seemed very plausible that she might have to consider retirement. Though, to be fair, I have seen much worse botches like Matt Seidel, yeah, an oh. Animal. Oh. or Billy Kidman, Kidman's up top, shooting star press. or Brock Lesnar. What the hell's Lesnar doing, Cole? Oh my god! 
just for clarification, I actually don't watch much pro wrestling these days, but I have seen some stuff. The next day, of course, the Stooges decide to make fun of Mutsubi and Candy, which, you know, is all kinds of awful, as not only were you making fun of your classmate, but you're also belittling an athlete who may have to go into early retirement due to injury. Hell, that wasn't bad enough. <laughs> They're joking, but let's face it, this is totally the kind of stupid move the Young Bucks would try to pull. Nick Jackson up on the apron! Brothers man! Also, I call BS on that three count. Her shoulders were clearly not pinned to the ground. God, this is Montreal all over again. Surprisingly though, Mutsubi wasn't too upset about her own loss, so yeah, that plot point was a little useless, but more concerned about Candy possibly retiring, which for, you know, many real life fans of particular wrestlers is always a concern, especially ones with high flying styles like hers. Again, sorry if some of this stuff is going over y'all's heads, but this really is one of those episodes where you do need at least a little outside knowledge to really appreciate it. Candy's misfortunes only continued to pile up as she even got injured during a training session to the point that she had to switch out shirts between these cuts. Yeah, believe it or not, that's not even the worst example of sloppy visuals in this whole episode. Anyway, I could theorize that Oyashi might have been right, and that a bad item might have been causing all of this. So they tried to find it at Candy's next match. While looking around, they saw Mutsumi meet her idol, which, yeah, good god, the security here sucks. And this is why wrestlers always get their stuff stolen. Anyway, in a nice bit, Candy did tell a bit of a white lie in order to preserve kayfabe, but did provide her fan with some inspirational words about how everyone's greatest opponents are often themselves. Also, nice subtle visual touch here with Candy walking with a bit of a limp. Almost makes up for this obvious animation error. The match commenced with Candy taking on, um, Dewdrop? Well, good choice, she is a relatively safe worker. However, safe worker or not, they need to find a bad item before Miss Fortune struck again and what? <coughs> um, what just happened? I think Mutsumi accidentally threw her figure into the air and it landed perfectly on its feet in front of the Oshamajo. Everything about this was just kind of off with how the figure floated out of her hand and straight up into the air, all the while having a different resolution than everything around it. I think it holding here was supposed to act as like a big reveal that it was a bad item, but everything around it was just so poorly handled that I'm more confused than anything. Look, Mitsu Aoyama, I can understand being frugal with your budgets, but that doesn't give you an excuse to shortchange basic stuff like flow and framing. Hell, since she has an aisle seat, why not just have her drop the figure rather than using and abusing the drag and drop feature, which, yeah, they've been doing throughout this whole episode. But yeah, as I said, the doll turned out to be the bad item, which does raise the question, how did Candy get injured during practice if it was nowhere nearby? Did it become something like a voodoo doll? Did the misfortune follow her after the first match? I don't know. Well, whatever. They purified the doll and returned it to its owner just in time for the fish with Candy mending things with a pretty sweet Macho Man elbow. Oh, and I guess she was also part of some sort of tournament, so she just kind of won it after just recently losing her title. Hmm. Inconsistent booking that leads to an uneven distribution of awards and championships. Yeah, sad to say that's one of the most accurate depictions of pro wrestling today. And the episode just kind of ended with some recycled footage. Yup, no resolution with her brother, we just kind of ended with the cold opener and the sequence from when Mutsubi originally got her cursed doll. Hmm, inconsistent booking that leads to an uneven distribution of awards and championships. Yeah, sad to say that's one of the most accurate depictions of pro wrestling today. It's a little hard to pin down, but I think some of the pacing and flow of this one just felt a little off, from low plot holes to things just kind of abruptly concluding, there was just not much to grasp onto here. It didn't have anything too bad other than the typical Aoyama animation, and to be fair, it did have some better story beats than, well, a lot of wrestling shows these days. I think this episode's biggest problem was that there was a little too much going on between the Stooges' antagonism, Mutsumi's brother's antagonism, Mutsumi's early amateur career, Candy contemplating retirement, and of course the bad item search. 
Personally, I would have exercised most of the stuff at the school for obvious reasons, and put more focus on the bad item, candy, and at least a little on Mutsumi's brother. Considering how he was pretty much the main antagonist of this episode, it feels incredibly unsatisfying to just leave that plot point hanging. Why not have him go to Candy's match with his sister, see her win, and in turn be won over to the point that he acknowledges her as a good wrestler in her own right? Though, on that note, this also did have some decent fan service for even a casual wrestling fan. Certainly nothing along the lines of Kirikuman or Tiger Mask, but still entertaining, especially when you look at it from Candy's perspective as an athlete who almost suffered a career-ending injury because of some stupid cursed doll. Some of the wrestling moves they animated looked decent and was probably where a lot of the focus went into this episode, which unfortunately limited to everything else, as again, this was an Aoyama episode. Again, I'm not asking for a Sakuga Fest animated by Kodai Watanabe, but I just cannot stand how this guy cuts so many corners with his animation. Overall though, it's unlikely this episode would have been saved by better animation. Even with the capture of another bad card, this is a bit of an unfocused and skippable filler episode, especially if you're not into pro wrestling. This week is going to be Thanksgiving, so um, happy early turkey gorging day to all my viewers in the states. Though yeah, in general, I hope everyone has a nice and safe week, considering this is also the same week in which something more commercial is going to happen. My advice is, just don't try too hard to get some of those new consoles. Still, until next time though, farewell for now my friends, and uh, yeah, no, this is the kind of wrestling show I can get behind.